In previous videos, I've been very clear. What sets Microsoft 365 Copilot apart from Bing Chat and Bing Chat Enterprise is that the former has access to all your data and the latter does not. The value proposition for Microsoft 365 Copilot and its price tag that is either $25 or $30 per month more than Bing Chat Enterprise, depending on what license you have, is around its capability to give context to the AI requests it makes via the Copilot Orchestrator having access to all your data. However, you guys wouldn't leave that alone. And I've continued to get questions and comments related to workarounds intended to get more of Microsoft 365 Copilot's functionality, but without the bill. So in this video, after really thinking about these questions and poking around different ways to use Bing Chat Enterprise, I'm gonna take you through some hard limitations you need to understand on how it is just different than what Microsoft 365 Copilot will be but also some ways you can push the limits of what Bing Chat Enterprise will do to make it closer to what you're looking for. But before that, let's start off with a little bit of background so we can understand what foundationally is similar or different between these two products. I hope the content of this video is useful to you. If it is, please remember to like the video, and if you'd like to see more like this, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you know the next time I release a video. Additionally, if content like this would be useful to people in your network, please do consider sharing it there too. Thanks. Microsoft 365 Copilot remains in its early access program with no announced general availability release date. We know that Microsoft regards this to be a much better integrated and more powerful AI-assisted experience for Microsoft 365 users than Bing Chat Enterprise is intended to be, judging both from how it has been described and demonstrated and the pricing that has been announced. There's a link to this video in the description if you want to dig into that detail a little bit more. Bing Chat Enterprise was really a surprise addition last month. And it really extends Bing Chat in just one way. It makes guarantees around the ownership and care of data that's shared with it that Bing Chat, nor other services like ChatGPT or Bard, just don't. The selling point here is by using Bing Chat Enterprise, you are guaranteed that Microsoft isn't harvesting or using your proprietary business data for other purposes. And for this reason, you should direct your employees here rather than to another AI service. There is absolutely no claim from Microsoft that Bing Chat Enterprise includes any technical capabilities that Bing Chat does not. This isn't the point. Bing Chat Enterprise is just Bing Chat with a different terms of service. It is not, nor has it been suggested that it's Microsoft 365 Copilot Lite Edition, despite a lot of people making that leap of logic. There are definitely big similarities in what Bing Chat or Bing Chat Enterprise does and what we expect Microsoft 365 Copilot to do. We know that Bing Chat leverages OpenAI's GPT-4 and we know that Microsoft 365 Copilot will do this too. We also know that for either Bing Chat Enterprise or Microsoft 365 Copilot, your data never leaves Microsoft's walled garden. So it is Microsoft's own instances of OpenAI's models that are being used. We also know that both services essentially use vanilla AI models. It's confirmed that Microsoft does not use your data for training or tuning with Microsoft 365 Copilot, and we also know this for Bing Chat Enterprise. For both services, we expect that Microsoft controls the output you get from the LLM using some form of meta prompt, which for our purposes we can think of like ChatGPT's new custom instructions. There's a link to this video below if you want to find out more about that. It's unknown whether the rules given in this meta prompt are different from Bing Chat Enterprise and Microsoft 365 Copilot, but I would expect that they are, even if just subtly. Both Bing Chat Enterprise and Microsoft 365 Copilot are able to access the web, but where they differ is how else Microsoft 365 Copilot can get to data. It sits on top of another technology called the Copilot Orchestrator. This is the tool that brings context to your requests by searching for and serving up grounding information from the Microsoft Graph, giving it access to anything in your tenant that you, as a user, has access to. Bing Chat Enterprise does not have access to this tool. On the issue of accessing your Microsoft 365 data, Bing Chat Enterprise and Microsoft 365 Copilot are wildly different products. 
So what does this look like in reality? So if, for example, we ask Bing Chat Enterprise to state what meetings you have today, you can see that it has no clue, but it helpfully gives you some idea of how you would check. Similarly, I can ask it to provide a summary of my latest emails, but again, it has no clue and just gives me a bit of a pointer as to where to find them. If I ask it about the last document I worked on, well, sometimes you don't get much help and sometimes you get an intriguing response like this, more on that later. This isn't obfuscation. Bing Chat Enterprise genuinely doesn't have visibility into this data, so genuinely cannot give you a response. Microsoft 365 Copilot, on the other hand, will have access to this data. So perhaps I could be more explicit. What if I take a link to a resource in SharePoint or my OneDrive and get Bing Chat Enterprise to look at that? It has access to the web after all, so it should be able to follow a link. So being the most generous I can, I'll create an open access link where anyone with the access to the link can get full access to the document and then ask Bing Chat Enterprise to take a look. But as you can see, it just won't do this. So maybe we could be more explicit. We could take the actual address of a file in SharePoint without all that superfluous uh, text that Microsoft adds to the sharing link. It's not so easy to do this anymore, but you can kind of work it out if you have a simple file path. So here's what I'm looking for, and alas, I give it to Bing Chat Enterprise and it isn't able to work with that either. Now, I think here we are running into two issues. First, clearly Microsoft has put into place some controls to stop this from happening. Secondly, I think it probably makes sense that these services predominantly rely on the internet properties that they have indexed rather than everything that's out there. Your SharePoint links are not indexed, unlike open sharing links from Google Drive, so Bing cannot work with them. But we shouldn't give up here. The Bing Chat website might be useless when it comes to this sort of request, but there is another option, the Bing Chat Enterprise sidebar. The Bing Chat Enterprise sidebar, which is part of the Edge browser, differs from the Bing Chat Enterprise accessible through its website in that the sidebar has context of the browsing that you're doing. This means that simply Bing Chat Enterprise is able to see the web page you're viewing and provide insights based on its content. So first you have to make sure the Bing sidebar actually has access to the content of your web pages. To do this, open the sidebar and then click on the three dots. Go to notification and app settings and make sure the option to allow access to any web page or PDF is turned on. Now you've turned that on, if you open a Word document in your browser, Bing Chat Enterprise should have access to the contents of that document. You can then use Bing Chat to provide insights on the content of that document. And because you're using Bing Chat Enterprise, this all happens with the protections for your data that you'd expect from Microsoft. You can also do the same with email, but I've found that if you just use the sidebar against the full Outlook web client, Bing Chat Enterprise can get a little bit confused. For example, I've seen situations where it will conflate two different email threads into one because they're both displayed, at least partially, on the screen. Well, why does this happen? And will it be something that happens when you use Microsoft 365 Copilot? Well, really, this comes back to how Bing Chat Enterprise is actually doing something wholly different to Microsoft 365 Copilot and just coming up with a partially similar result. Using the Copilot Orchestrator, Microsoft 365 Copilot will actually have access to each of your emails in a discrete data entity. It will have the contents, the to and from fields, the date, all the metadata associated with your emails, and it will be able to pull them down for review as email threads. By contrast, Bing Chat Enterprise doesn't actually have access to the data driving any of your emails, it just has access to the Outlook web page displaying them. So while it can read all that information, it doesn't have any guardrails to understand the difference between email A and email B other than the presentational code that separates them on screen. Try looking at the code view of your Outlook email page and fully understanding what's going on. It's pretty complex. So it's implicit that the simpler we can make a web page that we're looking to engage with using Bing Chat Enterprise, the more successful it will be. And for email, there's a simple hack you can use that really makes Bing Chat Enterprise a whole bunch more useful. If you open a single email from Outlook, 
then it opens in this little pop-up window and it's impossible to open the Bing Chat sidebar using either a menu option or the shortcut key. But if you turn this pop-out window into a tab, you can then open the Bing Chat sidebar and Bing Chat Enterprise now has access to read this super simple web page that includes an entire email thread. You can then interrogate this data as you would any other text. So that is really where the excitement should stop. As in many other ways, Bing Chat Enterprise simply does not have the capacity to do what Microsoft 365 Copilot does. For example, it can read your data from the browser, but it certainly can't interact with your documents or emails. It can't create a new document for you or send an email. It also is limited to what you have on screen, so comparing and summarizing the contents of lots of different documents or email is just impossible. However, let's go back to that strange message we got about a Bing Chat Enterprise OneDrive add-in. So far as I can tell, there is no Bing Chat Enterprise OneDrive add-in. The menu structure being suggested doesn't even exist, and I have no awareness of this being anything that's on the roadmap. I think this was probably an example of an AI hallucination, rather than some Microsoft corporate secret being revealed. However, we do know from the Build conference that it's Microsoft's goal to bring plugins like we see in ChatGPT to Bing Chat, and thus perhaps also Bing Chat Enterprise. It seems conceivable that a plugin framework for Bing Chat Enterprise could leverage the fact that the service is logged in using a work account to gain access into Microsoft 365 data or Azure resources. We already have models for how this could work through programs like Teams and how IT teams can restrict or allow such extensions. However, it's not clear that this would make good business sense for Microsoft, who might already be on the path of having an uphill struggle selling Microsoft 365 Copilot in the quantity it needs to. Every inch Bing Chat Enterprise gets closer to that premium add-on, the smaller a market it's going to have. Ultimately, I think there will probably be a few more hacks people will find of how to do stuff with Bing Chat Enterprise that interacts more directly with your data. For example, we know that it's going to be part of Windows Copilot, and so that opens a few extra possibilities too. But Microsoft has decided to have two product tiers here, and it's going to do what it can to ensure that its premium product has bells and whistles that simply cannot be replicated in the free starter product. If what I've shown you in this video meets your needs, then great. But otherwise, I'm afraid that you're probably going to need to keep waiting for Microsoft 365 Copilot. Do you have any other tricks you'd like to share? Leave a note of them in the comments down below. I hope this has been useful to you. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.